it's already reached domains just using a free edition, but this month, these changes to fundamentals are rolling out to Education Plus customers. So just thought it would be worthwhile doing a recap on this and having a closer look at best practices for managing licenses on your domain. So firstly, a recap about what changes uh, we are seeing from Google. So Google let us know last year, um, plenty of notice on this, that there were going to be changes to education fundamentals licenses. Essentially, Google wanted um, more control uh, over um, how these licenses uh, are provided to institutions, as there was uh, some uh, misuse uh, of this, but Google took the opportunity as well to add some additional licenses to make it a bit easier for us to manage this in the future. So in terms of what's happening, um, as I mentioned, it's already rolled out to customers on the free edition, so using fundamentals. And fundamentals, just to note here, continues to be free. There's no changes in cost to fundamentals. It's going to be free. It's still free. Um, so no changes there. The change uh, is, now if I share my, my screen and we talk through it on the admin console, um, let me share this tab instead. So you can see if your domain's already updated by going into billing and subscriptions. So previously, or currently for some domains still, you would just have Google Workspace for Education Fundamentals listed, and also listed here, you'd have your Education Plus licenses uh, as well if you've purchased those. And previously, you've never had to worry about fundamentals licenses. Those are automatically assigned and you've got, for intensive purposes, um, an unlimited number of those licenses. The change uh, which Google are implementing here is uh, these licenses uh, will have a finite uh, limit now. And essentially, uh, that limit is if you are a brand new domain, uh, you get two and a half thousand. Uh, if you're an existing domain, you get enough licenses to cover all of your users, plus uh, a buffer on top of that. So if you've got 5,000 users, you get 5,000 plus 20% uh, on top of that as well. So ensuring that you've got enough to assign uh, to all of your users. I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment, but also just wanted to mention there are two other license types launching now uh, alongside these changes to the fundamentals license. So this is the, the archived user license and the Gmail only license. So firstly, taking the Gmail only license, this enables just access to only Gmail, calendar and contacts, but it doesn't enable access to apps like Drive, Docs, Meet, Classroom, uh, and so on. This license is a really good fit for alumni or service accounts. Uh, so if you have service accounts on your domain, which might be a shared departmental account, where it's just used as a Gmail inbox only, and you've got other users delegated into that, but that could be a good fit uh, in this scenario. Uh, also, yeah, like I said, for alumni, uh, where you just want to provide basic email access, but no access to Drive, then this could also uh, be a, a good fit for those users. Now, just to mention here that if an account has previously had a fundamentals license and then gets a Gmail only license, okay, that data they've got in their account in their Google Drive is going to remain there and it's still discoverable via Google Vault. That data is not going anywhere. It's just restricting what that user can access. So they can then only access uh, that uh, only access via a Gmail inbox, uh, Google Calendar, or contacts. And again, just like the fundamentals license, you get enough of these licenses for all of your users on your domain, plus a healthy buffer. So plenty of those licenses as well. Now with the archived user license, this is uh, a different user state as well as a license. Probably easier if I explain it uh, via the admin console. So if we jump into the admin console now, you can see on this domain, I've got my uh, archived user licenses here. I can't actually assign these licenses from here. Okay, so in order to assign an archived user license, I actually need to archive a user. So if I go and find a user now on my domain, 
So let's find a student who may have left. If I select that student, okay, so rather than suspending the user, I can archive the user, which is pretty much the same as suspending the user, but the added benefit here is it will, if I go into here now, you'll see it will and refresh my window. It's removed the fundamentals license automatically for me and assigned an archived user license instead. So the only benefit over archiving user is it just frees up those fundamentals licenses, puts it back into general pool so they can be then reassigned to other users on your domain. So yeah, as I said, um, useful for preserving data. So any users with the archive license, all of our data is still held uh, in your domain, depending on your Google Vault rules and how they're configured. Um, users with the archived user license, just like suspending user, they can't sign into their account, they can't access any services. So it still achieves the same end goal as suspending a user, it's just freeing up the fundamentals license, putting that back into your general pool so you can make that available to other users. So when your domain gets updated with this new licensing model, what will happen is, so under billing, you will see these new license types uh, appear. Any user who already has a fundamentals license, so that means all existing users on your domain, they will still have a fundamentals license. So there's no gonna, not gonna be any disruption uh, of service set. And probably a good uh, time to mention that, Having a fundamentals license is essential to using Google Workspace. If you need a user to access apps, they need to have a fundamentals license assigned to them. Without a fundamentals license, just like on a business domain, you won't be able to access any Google services. So without that license, uh, no service access at all. That's why we need to assign these licenses to our users to ensure they can access Google Workspace, but also to ensure their data is uh, held in accordance with our Google Vault rules and discoverable and uh, stored there. So when your domain gets updated, you'll see these new license types. All of your existing users will still have a fundamentals license. And what Google will do, just to make it super easy for everyone, is they will turn on automatic licensing for fundamentals on your top level OU. So it'll be configured here uh, on your top level and set to auto assign fundamentals licenses. But something you might want to do, uh, particularly if you are looking at utilizing the Gmail only licenses uh, as well, and um, I'll talk about archiving in a second. So for Gmail only, what I've done is I've turned off automatic licensing on this OU. And what I can do here then is set this to automatically license these users in Gmail only with that license type. So that could be useful to set if you've got an OU already storing your um, departmental service accounts, which are just used as a mailbox only, then you could set that up in here as well. And that just ensures that any users going into there gets a correct license type. As you can see here, I've also got an archive OU. So this is where I pick my archive users and I can then um, archive those. Now there's a few ways of archiving users, if I talk about that first of all, and then we'll come back to some other ways of managing licenses. So when it comes to archiving users, uh, like I'm showing you earlier, you can either do that in the admin console by selecting uh, a user. So let's go into our staff OU this time, just to recap, recap quickly. Go into our staff OU and select archive user from here, archive the user, and then that puts them into the archived state and it will update their license assignment for us. But I like to keep my users and OU structures nice and tidy. So as I've archived that user, I'm gonna also move them into my archive OU as well, just to keep uh, things organized. You can also update the user's archive status by using GAM. So I think over one of these slides here, I do have some sample GAM commands for you. So firstly, um, this to users, you can use this GAM command at the end here. So you type in GAM update user, followed by the user email address, and then specify archived and whether you want archived to be on or off. So if you set it to on, it archives the user, 
removes their fundamentals license and assigns the archive license instead. And you could do this as a bulk update as well. So you could use a GAM query to find all the users in your archive OU and then set all of those users to be archived. Or you could update from a CSV file if you wanted to do that on bulk as well. Now, if you didn't want to auto assign your fundamentals licenses via the admin console, you can also assign and remove licenses with GAM as well. We've got some sample GAM commands here uh, for you, which illustrates how to do that. So if you're updating a license for a single user, if you're just adding a license, all you need to specify is the user's email address and then the SKU ID. And I've got these listed here for both of the new license types uh, down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and as I mentioned, you can also use queries in GAM to update licenses and other things uh, on your admin console. So in this instance, we're using a GAM query to uh, find everyone who's in a specific OU uh, and who isn't suspended. And we're, we're piping that into GAM and then adding a license of uh, whatever one we want to add. Uh, so just to mention and remind you, archiving, very similar to suspending a user. And you can still suspend users. Uh, the, the only downside to suspending a user is it's just taking up a fundamentals license, which could be assigned to another user uh, on your domain. So that's licensing with GAM. There are a couple of other ways you could manage these licenses. So depending on how you're already managing your licenses for Education Plus on your domain. So as I mentioned earlier, we've already looked at how you can do this via the admin console. You can use Google Cloud Directory Sync. So if you're provisioning users from your local Active Directory with Google Cloud Directory Sync, that can also take care of archiving users um, or assigning licenses as well. There's another tool uh, which I've got mentioned here as well. So the GWFE license tool is a tool that uh, we have developed with Google. It's a Google Sheets based tool. Uh, you can get it by going uh, to GWFE license tool.com, which brings you to the site where you can get a copy uh, of this tool. It's completely free. And within here, you can uh, firstly tell it how many licenses you've got of different editions, and then you can come into this tab and select uh, what licenses uh, you want to assign to what OU or group. The benefit of using this tool is, unlike the ad, uh, it can assign licenses based on group membership as well. So if you've got a group email address, um, if you had you know, maybe a staff group instead of uh, an OU which we're using to manage, licenses, you can reference that um, in here and assign licenses based on that. Just select which license type you want to have assigned. So uh, we can select Education Plus or our fundamentals license. We can sync that and set that to be automated. So as I've done here, I've already specified uh, my different OUs. So I've got my staff OU, students OU, and my Gmail only OU. Uh, but the other unique thing in this tool is we can also tell it to archive users. So this is just another way of bulk managing your archiving process. So then anyone who goes into the archive OU will automatically be archived and get that archive license and have a fundamentals license uh, released. If you're using this to assign your Education Plus licenses as well, uh, one of the nice features in here is specify uh, inactive days here. So what that means is if a user hasn't signed in for 30 days, then they get the Education Plus license removed. Um, not essential with a fundamentals license, but useful for managing those paid licenses. Uh, so this is just currently being updated. The new version will be released uh, later this week uh, for managing the fundamentals uh, licenses. So yeah, do go back and have a look at that if that's of interest. And yeah, also, like I mentioned, you can use other third party tools like GAM and uh, other tools like ClassLink as well. So if you're a ClassLink user uh, and we supply ClassLink, uh, one of the cool features in ClassLink is it can also assign and remove licenses and archive and unarchive users uh, using the rules you can build in ClassLink. So that's another really powerful product that lets you manage your different licenser types. So just a reminder on the timeline here, so for domains and the free editions, these changes have already rolled out, so you'll be seeing this already. For Education Plus customers, this is rolling out uh, this month, so do keep, do keep a lookout for that. 
under your billing settings. Um, you should get a notification from Google when your domain gets updated as well. So yeah, do keep a lookout for that. And we've got some additional information here as well, and I'll share this slide deck uh, with everyone. Let's do that now. Uh, so yeah, this goes to a useful article which goes through these different license types uh, and this transition in much more detail.